are clear uh, guidelines uh, that are available from the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, um, but there are also judgment calls that are required. Um, because as I say, a lot of cases can fall into a gray area where, um, you know, it, it's, it's a tough judgment call as to whether the, the baby and or in many cases the mother are better off uh, with an induction and delivery than continuing the pregnancy or what we call expected management. Um, so yes, there are guidelines. I'm not sure the guidelines can get any stricter or tougher at this point for indicated deliveries. Um, but uh, there still will always be uh, room and should be room for judgment of individual physicians. I think that where we really need more evidence is in the issue of elective inductions at 39 weeks. So if we were to manage all women expectantly from 39 weeks on, the evidence in the literature and more recent evidence that we presented at the annual meeting of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists suggests that stillbirth rates will be higher with expectant management. The concern, on the other hand, was that if you induced patients at 39 weeks electively, healthy, noliparous patients that are, that are uh, babies have, are in a vertex presentation, there are no medical uh, or obstetrical compelling reasons for the induction, that your C-section rate might be higher. And so you'd have to weigh the elevated C-section rate and the morbidity to the mother accruing C-sections versus the risk of stillbirth. Well, our data suggest, and there's a growing body of, of literature that, that support the notion that in fact elective inductions at 39 weeks lower C-section rates, uh, lower the risk of maternal morbidity, uh, lower the risk obviously of fetal mortality, and lower the risk of neonatal morbidity. And the reasons for that are that with each week of gestation, there's, a, there's the likelihood the mother will develop high blood pressure or that the fetus will keep growing and get larger and larger and larger uh, and be less likely uh, to fit uh, uh, through the pelvis uh, for a vaginal delivery and more likely to have birth trauma and particularly shoulder dystocia and brachial plexus injuries if we wait that period of time. So um, the, I think the, the, the evidence that we've generated through the use of a, uh, a Monte Carlo microsimulation model, uh, coupled with the data from clinical trials that have already been done, um, are certainly sufficient to warrant additional studies, additional randomized clinical trials of the efficacy of elective induction at 39 weeks, uh, and additional models, decision models, uh, support and decision analysis models that might use other variables that we didn't think of. Um, so I'm not ready to recommend that everyone, you know, in the United States, uh, that uh, every obstetrician in the United States electively induces all their healthy noliparous patients at 39 weeks, but I am suggesting that it's time for really careful studies of this issue.